Histology is a study of tissues and cells at the microscopic level. It's the cornerstone of understanding body design and pathology. This introductory chapter will illuminate the cell and its subcellular features. As a rule, humans have four basic tissues, epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous tissue, each of which consists of cells and an extracellular matrix. Cells are a mass of protoplasm surrounded by a plasma membrane. In the protoplasm is the nucleus with its DNA, and the surrounding gel-like cytoplasm with organelles and inclusions. Extracellular matrix is around cells. It's the product of cell secretion. Totaling 60 trillion in the body, some 200 different cell types are found in humans. Histology relies on the magnifying and resolving power of a microscope. Two major types are light and electron microscopes. They have different lenses and sources of illumination. A conventional light microscope uses bright field illumination, or photons, and has a resolving power of about 200 nanometers, whereas the electron microscope can resolve up to 0.5 nanometers. Tissues are chemically fixed and embedded in paraffin or plastic, which are then sectioned with a microtome. Most tissues and cells absorb very little light or electrons, so staining with chemical dyes and heavy metals is needed. The basic light microscope has a light source below, a condenser lens, a stage for the slide, objective lenses, and ocular lenses. Electron microscopes, on the other hand, use a source of electrons, which have a shorter wavelength than light and provide greater resolution. Ultra-thin sections are cut from plastic embedded tissues after staining with heavy metals, and images are produced in black and white, not color. EM is indispensable for diagnosis of many diseases in which pathological changes are too small to be resolved by light microscopy. Seen here are three comparative views of cells in cartilage as seen by light microscopy, or LM, transmission electron microscopy, or TEM, and scanning electron microscopy, or SEM. Scanning electron microscopes are used to study surface topography. They give three-dimensional images. Here is a typical cell seen schematically by electron microscopy. In polarized cells such as this one, the plasma membrane has basal, lateral, and apical surfaces. The cytoplasm contains organelles and inclusions that surround a nucleus. The main membrane-bounded organelles are the rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, Golgi complex, and vesicles. The centriole consists of microtubules and is part of the cytoskeleton. In some epithelial cells, the apical border has many finger-like extensions called microvilli. Membranes are semi-permeable barriers that regulate movement of ions, water, and macromolecules. They house lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates. A current rendition of the cell membrane shows a phospholipid bilayer in blue with associated integral and extrinsic proteins. These proteins function as channels, pumps, receptors, or for cell adhesion. By high-power EM, seen below, the cell membranes of two adjacent cells have a trilaminar appearance and are 5 to 8 nanometers thick. The main types of cell junctions include tight or zonula occludens, anchoring junctions or zonula and macula adherens, also known as a desmosome, and gap or communicating junctions. We will look at gap junctions momentarily. Junctions usually occur between lateral borders of adjacent cells and are designed to resist stress and facilitate intracellular communication. Tight junctions are common between epithelial cells and are closest to the luminal surface where they form a belt-like seal between cells. 
In certain cells, such as endothelial cells of capillaries in the central nervous system, tight junctions are the structural basis for the blood-brain barrier. By EM, plasma membranes at tight junctions appear fused at one or more focal sites and are linked by transmembrane proteins. Two kinds of anchoring junctions, the zonial adherens and macula adherens, also known as a desmosome, hold cells together. Actin filaments typically anchor the zonial adherens, whereas intermediate filaments anchor desmosomes. Resembling spot welds, desmosomes are complex junctions that link epithelial, cardiac, and smooth muscle cells. Dense plaques are on the cytoplasmic sides of opposing membranes, and the intercellular space often shows a central dense line rich in the protein cadherin. A gap junction is seen by TEM to the right and schematically below. They allow communication between adjacent cells. A narrow 2 nanometer gap separates opposing membranes. Proteins known as connexins form hexamers called connexons that pack tightly in groups within the membrane and form channels. Each half connexon contains a central pore about 3 nanometers in diameter that connects with an opposing connexon in the neighboring membrane. Connexons, like other voltage-gated channels and membranes, can undergo reversible open and closed conformations. The nucleus is the most conspicuous structure in the cell. It contains genetic material. Its shape and size depends on cell type. The main components of the nucleus are nucleolus, chromatin, nuclear envelope, and a diffuse filamentous nuclear matrix. The nucleolus is a site of ribosome production and has a high content of RNA, so stains intensely basophilic by LM. Nuclear chromatin exists in two forms. The pale euchromatin has dispersed regions of DNA and is transcriptionally active. The condensed transcriptionally inactive heterochromatin appears dark. Let's now take a closer look at the nuclear envelope and a nuclear pore. The nuclear envelope, which separates nucleus from cytoplasm, consists of two parallel membranes separated by a narrow perinuclear space. The envelope, viewed by TEM above and SEM below, contains nuclear pores about 100 nanometers in diameter that perforate the two membranes and permit selective bidirectional exchange of small molecules and ribosomal subunits. Nuclear pores have a complex three-dimensional structure. The most recognizable organelle in the cytoplasm is the ATP-producing mitochondrion. They vary in size and shape and are invested by two membranes. The outer membrane has a smooth contour whereas the inner membrane has transverse, shelf-like, or tubular folds known as cristae that project into the mitochondrial matrix. Here, seen by TEM, are two mitochondria showing their outer membrane, internal cristae, and matrix. Diseases that affect mitochondria, resulting in mainly muscle weakness and dysfunction, are known as mitochondrial myopathies. Note also the rough endoplasmic reticulum in surrounding cytoplasm. The endoplasmic reticulum is a network of tubules, vesicles, and sacs, also called cisternae, in the cytoplasm. They can be scattered or layered into parallel cisternae. ER is enclosed by a membrane that resembles a plasma membrane. Two forms of ER are smooth ER with no ribosomes and rough ER studded externally with ribosomes. Smooth ER functions in carbohydrate metabolism and contains enzymes such as glucose 6-phosphate, which converts glycogen to glucose. Smooth ER also degrades lipid-soluble drugs and alcohol and functions in lipid metabolism. Rough ER appears as beaded membranes within the cytoplasm. Rough refers to the presence of ribosomes on its external membrane surface. Rough ER translates proteins and is involved in glycoprotein production and protein folding. Once proteins are synthesized, most travel to the Golgi complex. Cells that synthesize and secrete proteins 
contain extensive rough ER. The Golgi complex is located in the cell center close to the nucleus and shows various stages of activity. It is a complex array of flattened, slightly curved membrane-bound sacs with associated vesicles. The Golgi is a polarized organelle that has a cis face and trans face. Some cells have one Golgi, whereas other synthesizing proteins and polysaccharides have many. The Golgi forms secretory vesicles that release contents by exocytosis, or the vesicles may become internally stored lysosomes. Lysosomes are membrane-bound vesicles that contain 50 or more hydrolytic enzymes. They are spherical or irregular in shape and show various stages of activity and can be classified as primary, secondary, or tertiary lysosomes. They are abundant in cells engaged in phagocytosis and serve in defense against infection by engulfing viruses, bacteria, and other pathogens. Lysosomes are also an intracellular digestive system for organelle turnover and aid in self-destruction of cells. Tay-Sachs disease is a genetic and often rapidly fatal lysosomal storage disease. Peroxisomes are membrane-bound organelles spherical to ovoid in shape and 0.1 to 0.5 micrometers in diameter. They are especially prominent in hepatocytes and proximal tubule cells of the kidney and perform various anabolic and catabolic functions. Peroxisomes contain oxidative enzymes that appear as dense crystalline cores. Inclusions are relatively inert, dispensable, transitory components of the cytoplasm. Usually metabolic byproducts or stored nutrients, they include glycogen, lipid droplets, and pigment granules. By EM, glycogen appears as non-membrane-bound, electron-dense granules with an irregular shape. Lipid is stored in the cytoplasm of many cells and appears as large spheres up to 90 micrometers in diameter. They normally lack a membrane and consist of triglycerides and esters of cholesterol. Steroid secreting cells such as those in the adrenal cortex and gonads contain many small lipid droplets. The cytoskeleton provides structure for a cell. It consists of microtubules, intermediate filaments, and microfilaments. Microtubules are hollow tubes 25 nanometers in diameter and are distributed in most cells. They're abundant in neurons and dividing cells and are the main structural component of centrioles and cilia. Their walls are composed of the protein tubulin. Immunocytochemistry, as seen here, is a powerful research and diagnostic labeling technique to show proteins like tubulin and other molecules in cells. The cytoskeleton also contains intermediate filaments which are 8 to 12 nanometers in diameter and form wavy bundles in the cytoplasm. They provide mechanical support and are flexible. Microfilaments include actin filaments and have cytoskeletal and motility functions. They're also flexible and can transmit forces contributing to cell movement by interacting with thick myosin filaments. The centrosome is a microtubule organizing center which generates microtubules and the mitotic spindle. Microtubules are essential to the cell cycle and guide the organization and separation of chromosomes during cell division. Cellular division, or mitosis, is divided into five phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. Following chromosome separation, the daughter cells pinch off from each other and the nucleus and nucleolus reform. Mitosis inhibitors are used clinically for treating a variety of cancers since tumor cells divide more rapidly than do normal cells. This concludes the overview of Chapter 1, The Cell. Thank you for watching.